In this example, we're asked to evaluate this triple integral. So triple integral over region E, x squared dv. Um, of course, we know that these triple integrals don't really mean anything unless or until we can understand what the region E is. So in this case, it's a three-dimensional solid region E that we're trying to integrate over. And so we were told in this one that the region E is a solid that lies inside of a cylinder above the xy plane, z equals zero, and below, we're even told that this is a cone, so below this cone, and so let's sketch the region. And there, there's no restrictions on like rotational symmetry of this thing, it just lies completely between these surfaces. So in the x, y, z direction, our cylinder is just going to be a unit circle on the base, but then this extends upward. Since we are, since we know that this that our solid region lies above the xy plane, I'll just draw it this way, so it's inside the cylinder, above the xy plane, and then it's below the cone. And so the cone, um, this thing is a cone that's been stretched out by a factor of four. So when, in other words, when we reach the boundary of our cylinder, when x squared plus y squared equals one, this cone's height is gonna be four. All right, so this is at a height of z equals four is the height of this thing, but it's a cone, so it's attached like this. And the region is then not, not the stuff inside the cone, but everything outside of the cone, but inside of the cylinder. All right, so this is our region E that we want to integrate over. Of course, if we're going to try to integrate over this, we want to think about what's the best way to build this in terms of our coordinate systems. And this one is kind of, in my opinion, uh, begging to be done in cylindrical coordinates because it's very uh, polar looking in the base. There's a circle, a disk, right? And the equation of the upper bound of the surface, this one can easily be written in terms of polar coordinates of the base, right? So z, this is z squared, equals... Um, Right, so this is, sorry, this is not 4, then this is height of 2 up here. Sorry. Um, should read more carefully. I missed that squared term right there. But this, obviously, then tells us that z is the square root of all this. But x squared plus y squared is just r squared. So this is just z equals 2r. So this is the equation of our cone. All right. Moreover, if we build our domain in polar coordinates, then our r will vary from 0 to 1. And once that's been done, our theta will zip around, as I like to say, from 0 to 2 pi and fill out the entire disk down below. And so essentially what happens here is that we get a single kind of triangular edge of this thing. And to build the volume, that just zips around. Okay. If we're going to compute this integral in polar or sphere, uh, cylindrical coordinates, then we need to change the integrand as well. And I'm sure we remember that x is equal to r cosine of theta in polar coordinates. And so that means that x squared is equal to r squared cosine squared theta. And I'm sure you're remembering right now that the other thing we need to think about if we're going to convert everything to cylindrical coordinates is that we need to write our dv in the proper coordinate system. So the volume element in cylindrical coordinates is r, dr, dz, d theta, where the order of these can change if necessary, these differentials here. But the r is the key. We need this r. And so what we end up with then is that our triple integral over e, x squared dv, is going to be rewritten as the integral from 0 to 2r of our integrand times our differential here. So this is going to be r cubed cosine squared theta, r squared times r, times dz, the inner integral is dz. Then we can take the double integral of the base. So then it's from 0 to 2 dr and 0 to 2 pi, that's 0 to 1, sorry, 0 to 1, the radius is 1 here. 0 to 1, and then uh, 0 to 2 pi in the theta direction. Okay, now the outer two integrals look separable, but before we can separate anything, if, if we even can, we need to make sure that we're going to be allowed to, 
we have to first uh, do the iterated integral on the inside because this one has a function in the boundary. And so when we compute this, we have 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1. Those are just hanging around. Antiderivative, there's no z's in the integrand here. So this is just going to multiply by z. And then when we plug in, this will give us 2r to the fourth cosine squared theta d, uh, that, that's gone, sorry. So it's going to end up being the r d theta, but the integral, um, the dz is gone, of course. It's been integrated out. And now this one is separable. So the r variables can be separated into one integral, the thetas into their own integral. And at this point, we break it up, we compute. So this is integral 0 to 2 pi cosine squared theta d theta times the integral from 0 to 1, 2r to the fourth dr. This first integral, you need a power reducing formula or double angle, I believe it's probably called. But this cosine squared becomes 1 half. Um, integral 0 to 2 pi, 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, d theta. This one can just be computed. So this is 2 fifths r to the fifth, but the boundaries are just 1 and 0. So that's times 2 fifths. And when we integrate this out, um, the integral of 1 d theta is just 2 pi. And the integral of cosine 2 theta, d theta from 0 to 2 pi, that's going to be 0. So this integral is 2 pi over 2, or just pi. And so what we end up with is 2 pi 